Hey, Shalom Amakim, Shalom. First thing and foremost, I want to give all praises and glory and honor that's due to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, Rakakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings and salutation to the hopeful elect. Those in the gospel broad, lifting up the standard of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, wherever it may be. Uh, real quick, this is a lesson titled, uh, it says, Scardinian farmers suffer worse locust invasion in over 30 years. Okay, which we know locusts, they eat uh, crops and greenery which it was a primary plague that the Lord would bring during a famine, okay, to shut off the supply of vegetation and, and tilling crops and uh, pretty much uh, tilling the land to yield the increase. Like if you go into Exodus, the 10th chapter, uh, the Most High brought the locusts upon the lands of Egypt to destroy the crops thereof because we were in a time of famine, plagues, okay, which is swiftly coming to Babylon the Great, okay, because it says here, when farmers read it, Tulu saw a big black wave storm across the horizon and taking over the fields in April. She knew that little of her dry fodder of alfalfa crops would be left in the following days. But Tolu, 40, and other farmers working in central areas of the Italian island of Scardinia, which is, it says, have seen swarm of billions of locusts ravage their land in a worse such invasion more than three decades, which is 30 years. It says the invasion is projected to affect an area of around 60,000 hectares this year, double that of 2021 and compared with just 2,000 hectares in 2029. It says Tolu said that many other of our colleagues might have to shut down their business as the plague of locusts adds to the impact of drought and rising fuel costs on farmers. So this is like a double-edged sword here because they already have drought due to um, inclement weather, dry weather, and then the fuel costs are going up due to this gas shortage or this uh, diesel shortage and the fact that Saudi Arabia is pretty much running out of oil. Okay, so to go into the reserves, it's, it's pretty much depleted. So therefore, man, these people, they're not going to bounce back from what the hell is happening because now they're talking about famine and food shortages hitting America, which we're already in those stages. Okay, on top of another, uh, you know what, a pandemic. Okay, which if this place has to shut down again, it will not survive. And I can guarantee you that many of you people are going to start to face it. You're going to feel the power of the funk. But it says Tolu said that many of her colleagues might have to shut down their business. I read that already, but it says she and her family run a dairy farm, which dairy farmers, they're not making a lot of money. It says of 200 hectares near a village of Naragugum, no, it's Naragugami where crops and animal fodder, fodder such as white grass and clovers are known are also grown in around a thousand sheep graze it says this year tola was able to collect just 200 stacks of hay against 1000 in 2021 and she said with some of its harvest as early as a precaution and losing some of its nutritional quality wow it says here people farm the land to avoid purchasing fodder and other animal feeds uh, it says, which are over 70% of around the 280 inhabitants are employed in farming and shepherding, which is pretty much how they make a living out there. It says, Zaru said that anyone who has opted to farm grassland this year to boost milk production had lost the whole of their initial investment because of the locusts. Wow. And like I said, there's really no money in dairy farming anymore because everything is really going up. Okay, and the fossil fuel and the fuse and stuff like that and the commodities it takes to farm these particular goods is, is pretty much next to none. They're being depleted. Like the whole thing about wheat, they said like we have 10 weeks supply left and that was like three weeks ago. So they literally have seven weeks supply of wheat left. All right. But it says in 1946, about 1 1.5 million hectares of land accounting for two thirds of the island's territory were affected as locusts spread quickly across fields abandoning during world war ii it says ignazio flores who teaches general and applied et etymology at sardini sarcassi university said the population and uncultivated lands were once again one of the main reasons behind this kind of natural event but that's how about shimmy how shy okay they could try to put a scientific method behind it but these are the plagues of the lord but it says rising temperatures and lack of rain also play a big role it's dry and compacted soils and make it easier for locusts to lay their eggs. Okay, so that's the point. But um, I'm not going to read the rest of it. This is pretty much it. Uh, but I'm going to a couple of precepts here when it goes into the locusts here. This is the book of, uh, matter of fact, I did a word search here on locusts and it took me to Exodus, the 10th chapter, which we could pretty much read the whole chapter and get some understanding on it. 
Okay, but it's Second Chronicles 6 and 28, this goes into the prayer that Solomon prayed for Israel when Israel went off for the atonement of sins. And the Most High uh, responded to Solomon's quest by stating that if Israel returned from their, their wicked ways, the Lord will always heal and, and repent and forgive our sins. Okay, so this was a prayer of Solomon. But it says, if there be dearth in the land, dearth is another way of saying a famine. Okay, dearth in the land, if there be pestilence, if there be blasting or mildew. Locus of caterpillars, if their enemies besiege them in the cities of their land, whatsoever sore, whatsoever sickness there be. Okay, so this tells you straightforward that uh, famine is, is, is a tribulate with locusts. Okay, because what happens is that the locusts eat the crops and then on top of that, they're laying eggs. So when they land these particular eggs, it stops the crops from growing and on top of that, they feed on it. Okay, because locusts, they eat what? They eat plants and crops and grass. Which is a hey, it's, it's set up through the Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, Second Chronicles seven and thirteen. It says, "If I shut up heaven, there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land." And a hey, she even said it in an article. She said, "Well, look, it's been very, very dry. That's why I said that they try to put a scientific explanation behind it. But it's Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai because though it be dry and a drought, that send the plagues and the locusts is all Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai's judgments, man." Okay, why? Because, hey, the Lord is getting ready to bring this place down. Okay, we're entering a time of dark, dark, dark uh, judgment, man. You know, impending doom, so to speak, man. Because Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, man, they're not playing games with this place. You know, they're not playing games. And through the spirit of those of us that have the will to, to continue to serve the Lord, we're going to make it through it because, hey, the Lord is going to bring salvation into the elect. Okay, we just gotta remain faithful and keep and, and keep pushing, you know. But uh, it says here to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. But it goes into how the Lord said He will heal the land. Okay, uh, Psalms one hundred five and thirty four. It says He spake the locusts came and the caterpillars that without number, uh, that without number, and did eat up all the herbs in their land and devoured the fruit of their group or their ground. Slaki. Okay, okay, and the locusts. That's the point. You know, so the Lord deals with that. He deals with those particular plagues because you go into locusts. It goes into uh, it says a kind of locust, sudden uh, insignificance, locust, a particular like a grasshopper, a locust swarm. OK, so if you look up locusts. It goes into a locust are a group of certain species of short horned grasshoppers. OK, and the family of Archididae that have a swarming phase. OK, like two years ago. They fell so upon Las Vegas, you know, people was out there celebrating their vacations and then a locust came. OK, but that's the whole point that we're making. How about Shimi Hawashai is dealing with the locusts, man. OK, he's dealing with the plagues because this is his judgment. Right. So this is the book of Ezekiel seven. And I'm going to start at verses. Seven and I'm going to start at verses 15. It says the sword is without and the pestilence and the famine within. And he that is in the field should die with the sword. And he that is in the city, famine and pestilence should devour him. Okay. Which shows you famine is coming. All right. Because nine times out of 10, if you are in the city or if you're located in the inner city, you depend on trucks and so forth and supermarkets to get your goods, to get your commodities. You see what I'm saying? But if you're in a farm or if you're out in a rural area, you are into farming and agriculture, which hey, is a double edged sword because those of you that's farming and tilling the land, Hey, the plagues and the weather, the weather hasn't been very pleasant to you for real. You know, we've had a, a very dry summer, you know, temperatures hot, but I mean, it's not anything we haven't really seen before. But nonetheless, it's been very dry. We haven't had a lot of rain. OK, we've had bouts of humidity and then we've had a 100 degree day with no humidity, which feels like an 80 degree day, which offsets the influx of your crops, man. OK, and you don't have enough rain as it is. So it's a lose lose situation. But it says, but they that escape of them that shall escape and should be on the mountains like doves of the valleys, all of them mourning everyone for his iniquity, man. OK, and all the hands should be feeble and all knees should be weak as water. And they shall also gird themselves with sackcloth and horror should cover them and shame should be upon all faces and baldness upon all their heads, man. OK, because this is the whole judgment of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. When the Lord finally decides to bring a full fledged famine into Babylon the Great, man. That's when people are going to start to reconsider their actions. They're going to start to think, wait a minute. Okay, what do we do? We, we must have fucked up with the Most High. You see, we must have did something that pissed off the Lord because all this uh, girl boss, all this 
I don't need no man. All that stuff is getting ready to be thrown out, man. Okay, that stuff is getting ready to cease to exist. Because the Lord is not dealing with that madness, man. Okay, all this girl boss stuff. I don't need no nigga. Uh, you proud Jakes out there that's with the madness. Look, man, the Lord is getting ready to do away with all that stuff. That's why it says they should gird themselves with sackcloth and the whore should cover them, right? Because you're going to see literally rotten carcasses in the middle of the street, man. Okay, your loved ones, your kids, your women, your husbands, your, your parents, man. You're going to start seeing the people that you cared about fall victim of the judgments and the plagues that the Lord is going to bring upon this place, man. Okay, and the Lord is not playing with you people. We've been telling you for the longest that these things are going to manifest, and they are. You know, you're just not taking heed to it because you still have this, this internet age. You still have this technocracy that's up and running, okay? This internet, the social media. The social media is the primary uh, uh, blinder that you people have over your eyes because you're so proud and you're so into yourself. You're so fascinated with yourselves. You can't see the fact that the Most High is getting ready to tap you on the shoulder and knock you down. You know, Lord is getting ready to blindside a lot of people. And the two-thirds of our people, hey, you finished, man. You know, and it says, and they should cast their silver in the streets and their gold should be removed because the money ain't going to mean nothing. Okay, when you don't have money to spend or you have money, but the supermarkets are empty. Okay, people ain't going to be bartering with Federal Reserve notes. Okay, you got to have precious metals or something that somebody want, man. Okay, you got to have some type of substance. Nobody's going to give you a loaf of bread for a hundred shekels of Federal Reserve notes and, and, and inspect you to be cool. No, because the dollar ain't going to be worth anything. You got to have something to bring to the table. You got to have something that people need. Like, okay, women is going to be a primary commodity in that day. It's going to be a low commodity. But nonetheless, man, they're like, well, look, you ain't got silver. You ain't got food. You ain't got any particular uh, uh, ointment. So you don't have medical supplies. You don't have any type of thing that's going to benefit us. Any type of generators, electricity to get us through this dark time so the hell okay we'll take her but this is the this is the least you know but shit man it's gonna be a lot of people selling in that day and it says here and their gold and, sh and their gold should not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of Yahweh, and they should not satisfy their souls nor fill their bowels because it is a stumbling block of their iniquity okay so this is coming to america man we don't care how many of you jakes out there think that things is a joke like I was watching uh, one of the uh, forecast channels and a guy was stating like how we are going to see levels of decrease. But he said he don't see a full famine coming upon America. And I'm back in my mind. I'm like, you're a fool, bro, because just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not going to happen. You know, he's like, yeah, we may have food shortages, but I don't see us having a full fledged famine. Well, you don't know the Bible. OK. So this is the book of Exodus 10 and 1. It says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the hearts of his servants, that I may show these my signs before him, and that thou mayest tell in the ears of thy son and thy son's son what things I have wrought in Egypt, my signs which I have done among them, that ye may know that I am Yahweh. Okay, so these are the signs, okay? And when we get out of captivity, when we are in the kingdom of heaven, it's going to be literally nightmares of stories to tell our sons and our sons' sons and our daughters about this horrid, uh, horrid time we had in America, man. It's going to literally be a, a story for when our kids decide to be little knuckleheads, man. Though they're going to be good children, they're going to be brought up in the law, statutes, and commandments. But nonetheless, the scriptures say that children are full of folly. So you may have a time that you, you know, your little, your, your little man, your, your little, you know, your boy or your your little man's, he may, you know, be acting on some folly. You got to put him back in line. You got to tell one of these boogeyman stories, <laughs> you know, before you go to bed. <laughs> you know, it's a little inside thing. But uh, it says, And Moses and Aaron came unto Pharaoh and said unto him, Thus says Yahweh, the power of heaven of the Hebrews, How long would thou refuse to humble thyself before me and let my people go that they may serve me? Right, man. Okay. And this is the whole point. The Most High is getting ready to bring straight judgment to this society because Esau will not humble himself, nor the people that's under him. All right. And it's not meant for Esau to humble himself. The purpose of the destruction and the plagues is to bring him down, to destroy him. This is not a thing of, of correction, so to speak. It's a thing of the Lord destroying him because there's no correcting Esau. It says, else if thou refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow I will bring locusts into thy coast and they should cover the face of the earth and that one cannot be able to see the earth and they should eat the residue of which that is escaped which remaineth unto you from the hell 
and she eat every tree and grow which groweth for you out of the field. And they shall fill thy houses, and the houses of all thy servants, and the houses of all the Egyptians, neither which thy fathers nor fathers' fathers have seen, since the day that they were upon the earth unto this day. And he turned himself and went out from Pharaoh. And Pharaoh's servants said unto him, How long should this man be a snare unto us? And this is what they're saying about the prophets. How long should this man be a, these, these men be a problem with us, man? Same thing with the people of the world. They look at us as being snares because we're calling out their wickedness. We're calling out their hateful deeds and they don't like it. So they try to curse us. They try to, you know, uh, target us, you know, do things, devious things to us, pray evil titans upon us, you know, but there's no enchantment against Jacob. Okay. And it says, uh, be a snare to us. Let the men go that they may serve Yahweh their power. Notice that thou did not yet that Egypt is destroyed. So he's saying like, don't you see that Egypt is destroyed? But you study fucking around. And Moses and Aaron were brought again into Pharaoh, and he said to them, Go and serve Yahweh your power. But who are they that should go? And Moses said, We will go with our young and with our old and with our sons and with our daughters and with our flocks and with our herds. We will go, for we must hold a feast unto Yahweh. So this was a thing of urgency. And he said unto them, Let Yahweh be so as with you, I will let you go. And your little ones, look to it, for, your, for evil is before you. Not so. Go ye now that are men and serve the Lord that ye did desire. And they were driven from Pharaoh's presence. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand over the land of Egypt and locusts, that they may come upon the land of Egypt and eat every herb of the land, even all that the hell have left. And that was the point, man. Okay. And the Moses stretched over his rod over the land of Egypt. And the Lord brought an east wind upon the land all that day and all that night. And when it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts, and the locusts went up over the land of Egypt and rested on all the coasts of Egypt. Very grievous were they, before them there was such no locusts as they, neither after such that should be such. Okay, so that's the point. And it says, and they covered the face of the whole earth, so that the land was darkened, and they did eat every herb of the land, and all the fruit of the trees, which the hell had left. And they remained not any green thing in the trees, or in the herbs of the fields, through all the land of Egypt, man, okay? So that's the point I wanted to make, man. So I'm going to end it there, giving all praises and glory and honor that is due to you, how about 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 you, how